You've got to understand that for a Toyota dealer, it's a little bit harder to move a Toyota CHR, as in sell a CHR, than it is for a Honda dealer to be able to move a Honda HRV. So for us here in Boston, it's a pretty aggressive Toyota and Honda atmosphere. And anytime somebody's trying to make the debate over should I get the Honda or should I get the Toyota, a humongous deciding factor in this two is who's giving the better deal. And that's what I'm about to discuss on the 2019 CHR and HRV. What is happening you guys? Ari here with Boston Automotive Consulting and as always this video is brought to you by SaveOnMyAuto.com where you'll be able to go on and start shopping around with multiple dealers so that you can get the best price on both the Toyota CHR and the Honda HRV. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because this channel is all about giving you all the information you're gonna need so that you can land yourself the very best deal. So in discussing these two cars, you've gotta understand that both cars have very, very little markup in them. Partially the reason why they have very little markup is to reduce the actual price of the car as much as possible. This is really meant as an everyday person's inexpensive small SUV, you guys. So they really gotta price them very, very low. And in order to be able to compete with each other, Honda is putting out an all wheel drive for roughly around the same price as the front wheel drive version of the Toyota CHR. And here in New England, we're really only seeing the all wheel drive version of the HRV. So both vehicles I've got picked out at their lowest possible price here in Boston at least, with the CHR having an MSRP of 22,487 and the HRV an MSRP of 22,965. The CHR has a markup from invoice to MSRP of about 6% and the HRV, believe it or not, a markup of 3%. The reason why the markup is so minimal on HRVs is to, to strongly compete with the CHR. However, that doesn't mean that that's all the discount that you're gonna get. There's a lot of money that either is coming in the form of a rebate from the manufacturer or lease cash, or in the case of Toyota, going after a further discount because it's a harder vehicle to sell than the HRV is. So if I were to make a suggestion going after about 6% off of the Toyota CHR and then subtracting about $1,000 if you're planning on purchasing. If you're planning on leasing, still go after that $1,000 under invoice, but on the HRV, I'd probably go after another 500 below invoice. So essentially, getting to a selling price of about 21,300 on the CHR and 21,700 on the HRV. Now, both of these vehicles, being the strong competitors that they are, both have a promotional APR of 2.9% at 60 months. Both are offering a recent college graduate rebate with Toyota having 1,000 and Honda having 500. Again, Toyota with the higher discount and higher markup than Honda. Ultimately, if you're planning on purchasing either of these two, I'm thinking that the HRV is the safer bet even though you're getting slightly less of a discount. The price at its very base is being minimized as much as possible to be able to compete with the Toyota, plus you're getting all-wheel drive. If you don't need all-wheel drive, even better, that's only gonna reduce your selling price if you're following these targets that I'm telling you to only on a lesser front-wheel drive MSRP. Now, if you're planning on leasing, go after that same 6% discount like you were before on the CHR and the same 3% discount on the HRV However, on the HRV, in most regions at least, there's a $1,500 rebate from the manufacturer to the dealer, and on the CHR, typically in most regions as well, you're seeing about a $500 rebate that's coming as a form of lease cash as well. You're gonna also see this in the lease calculator, and feel free at any time to pause so you can see the breakdown of the math. What I'm doing in either scenario is, is running both the scenarios at invoice and plugging in the rebate amounts so that you can see what both lease payments would be coming out to. Now, the CHR, a 52% residual at 12,000 miles a year and an average money factor of 0.00012. The HRV, a 60% residual at 12,000 miles a year and a 0.00136 money factor. 
Now, plugging it all into a lease calculator and capitalizing all of the fees so that you're only giving just your first payment due at start on the CHR, not making the dealership lose any money at all, which I'm encouraging you to do when I'm telling you visit saveonmyauto.com and start shopping around. On the CHR, we'd be talking about $306 a month. That's including sales tax. And on the HRV, like I said before, just the first payment due at start, we'd be talking about $294 a month. And that's also including sales tax. So ultimately, like I said before, these two deals are not assuming any sort of loss. They're both at invoice price, what the dealer quote unquote owns the car for, minus any lease cash. So what I would do, especially here in Boston, I'd get a spreadsheet out. I'd start putting in all the different dealerships that have reached out to me after I visited Save On My Auto and start really aggressively targeting payments below what I'm showing you that the calculator is telling me as in if the calculator is telling me 306 on the CHR and you know 294 or whatever it was on the HRV push for 250 see which dealership is going to land you there because the difference between 250 and 300 dollars is close to about two thousand dollars that the dealership has to discount below their invoice price as in lose two thousand dollars to try and get you there so definitely want to encourage you, visit saveonmyauto.com and see exactly what your local dealers are offering you because ultimately if one dealership has a ton more HRVs or CHRs in their inventory than another, they're probably going to be the ones that are going to give you that we're losing money type of a deal on it. So guys, I hope that this helped you try and really decide between the two. I know that both vehicles are very comparable. I know that both payments and both selling prices were both very, very comparable. So ultimately it really just depends on if you need all wheel drive or which one looks more funky to you. I'd probably pick the Honda HRV though. If you found this information useful and you wanna see more of these new car buying and negotiation tip type videos, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to visit saveonmyauto.com down in the link in the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.